What's going on guys? Welcome back to Season 3 of my NHL 22 Ottawa Senators Franchise Mode Series. Right now we're 6 games through the preseason. 2-3-1 record. It's a little bit concerning, but luckily it's just the preseason. Colin White there has 5 assists in 6 games. I'll show you guys what happened last year. If you didn't see the episode, quick spoiler warning. Maple Leafs won back-to-back -back Cubs. Uh, we actually missed the playoffs the last 2 years. We picked 5th overall both times. I think this year's though is going to be different. We have a much better team. Really thinking we have a good shot at the playoffs. Also, too, you guys want to say thank you so much for the support in the last two episodes. If you can, leave a thumbs up on this one as well. I really appreciate it. So, look at the lines here, guys. We got Brady Kachuk, Tim Stutzla, Connor Brown on that first line, getting a plus one. I think it's a nasty first line. Manji Panning, Norris, Batherson on the second, get a plus two. Pinto, Monaghan, White get a plus one on the third. Then we have Ratcliffe, Zach, and DeBrusque on the fourth. Not too bad. Defensively here, Sanderson, Shabbat's on our top pair. Brancham and Sandino on the second pair getting a plus one, which I just noticed is actually like a little Swedish duo, so that's kind of cool. And then we have Johansson, Bernard Docker on the bottom pair. Goaltending wise, we now have Varlamov as our starter. Gustin there backing him up, so the goaltending situation is a lot better since we bought out Matt Murray. HL team here, we got Formanton, Lucius, and Malgan on the first line. Greg, Cooley, Fantilli on the second, both getting plus twos. Fantilli, of course, medium lead. Cooley, medium lead. Greg, there's a medium top six. I actually realized after I drafted him, but Fantilli was supposed to be high lead, so I'll have to make that change. Um, even the bottom six there, you can see a lot of 70s. I mean, Adam got to their fourth line center. I actually might trade him. I think get like a fourth or something, and he's not really helping us out on the fourth line. Uh, Brophy here, he's a 62, but medium lead, trying to get him growing. Started out at like a 49 for us, and so far, it's had good growth. I mean, was that 13 overall points in one year? Lassie Thompson there, probably make an NHL next year. Um, Allen here, Asperot, Guerrero, and a net. Goaltending wise, we've got Rodriguez, our starter in AHL, 81 overall, only 23. Sagar backing him up there to 77. So, both teams looking a lot, a lot better. I'm going to show you guys the ratings here as well before you start the sim. And actually, quickly too, I should show you the captaincy, as I think we've lost a couple, but. Right now, Kachuk's still wearing the C, Batson now is wearing the A, as well as Shabbat. I think, yeah, Nick Pauls, who we lost after the first season, I want to say. And as I mentioned before, guys, in regards to the ratings here, we've got 92 offense, 92 defense, and 86 goaltending. So we'll see whether or not that's good enough to make the playoffs. And like I was saying, guys, Godet's playing fourth line center for us in the AHL. So if I can just get a pick for him, I think it's a plus. I can try and get the Avs seventh here. They like him. And they say yes, okay, so just a free pick, essentially. All right, guys, so we're nothing in December here with a record of 20, 12, and 4, which seems pretty good. But we've actually not been playing the best lately. As we started out the year, I was going to pause it and I just kind of forgot. We were 11-0-2 to start the year. We didn't lose a game in regulation until November. And we actually didn't even lose a game in OT. Both of our losses came in the shootout. The other 11 games that we won. So crazy good start. Um, let's see here. Stutzla has got 41-36. We're currently fourth in the division. I'm also realizing, guys, I don't think I showed you the special teams. If I did, this will be cut out. You'll never see it. But... Power play one there, plus five, looking really good. Power play two's got a plus one. Four man, there's a plus three. PK's a plus three and a plus two. Monahan, of course, we brought in. I think he's helping out with that. Three man PK, two zeros. You can see Norris and Monahan there, we're leaning on heavily. So hopefully, like this team can keep it up. Obviously, I said playoffs this year, and it's looking that way. AHL team not looking over a point per game, and they're first right now in the division. So. Yeah, pretty happy with uh, both teams' performance so far. And we just got a pretty big trade off here, guys. Columbus offering up Jack Roslovich in a fourth. For Olison, there's a medium top six. Johansson, there's a low top nine. I didn't really think we had the salary cap to do this, but I guess we do. Roslovich is 85, but he's only got 25 points right now in 54 games. And he's making just under six for one more year. Could walk in free agency. Um, He's got a really good shot on him, honestly, especially for a two way forward. Good D awareness. I feel like maybe I do this trade at the deadline with 50% retained, although I don't even know, like he'd be a third line guy for us potentially if he doesn't have chemistry on the first line. So I probably want to hold off on this trade for now as there could be even somebody better at the deadline. And the Flyers here offering up Lindblom in a third for Lassie Thompson at Tillette, but uh, Lassie Thompson I think definitely will be a part of our you know top 60 in not too long. Gonna hold on to him. Well that's not good. We lost three in a row there. Martin Furk's got a crazy shot, but definitely not giving up a medium league goalie for him. And so we're about to be the deadline here. Miles Wood in a third for Lutz. We got rid of Wood. Definitely not giving up a medium top six for him. As you guys can see there, with 34, 23, and 5. Currently third place in the Atlantic. HL team, first in their division with 92 points. I think their goalie is definitely helping them out. Their defense is weak, but the forwards are stacked for the HL team, that is. Stutzla averaging over a point per game. I love it. And the AHL, Malgan, under a point per game. Now it's still not looking too bad. So we'll get to the deadline. I'm thinking we're a conservative buyer. Definitely not going to you know, trade away any of our best prospects or pick. We still have a good young team we're growing, but if we can do some late picks or you know make a good hockey trade, we'll do that. 
Jonathan Tage joined the Penguins. Geez, two years left at $9 million. I think that's a new contract as well. What the heck? Uh, that's a lot for Tays. Hints there, 86. Didn't get signed by Dallas. Wow. Andre Palat went with the Kings. Bjorkstrand, Wenberg, Jacob Voracek, one year left, 8.2. Kasperi Captain, Anze Kopitar. Not that much value considering... Or he's only an 85 now. I thought he was still a 90. Jeremy Swayman there. Still only an 85. Even though he had high star potential. That's interesting. Let's see. JVR there on St. Louis. One year left at 5 million. Okay. So um, we'll see. I think the team's biggest need probably just be a bit more offensive help. Like our defense is pretty solid. Uh, if we, and honestly too, like we have enough 84, 85 overall forwards. Really, if it's not like a star forward... I don't even think it's worth making the trade. And look at this guy. Logan Cooley currently has 10 goals and 43 assists in 61 AHL games. So he's got 53 points. I'm um, looking to see where is the other one. Adam Fantilli there. 28 goals, 19 assists. Okay, so he's got 47 points. I think both those guys are going to the NHL next year. So we are going to have such a good young core. But we're going to need some money, I think, to resign a lot of these guys. So Connor Brown, I'm thinking our trade should revolve around him plus extras to bring in like a true star player to play on that first line with Kachuk and Stutzla. Also guys, if you remember, I considered signing Chris Letang last summer and already like six months later, he's down from an 88 to an 84, making 9 million. So uh, definitely glad we did not pay him that much money. All right guys, so honestly, I think the best for the training block right now is Jakub Voracek, 86 overall, but you can see he's got a few X factors there. Really good playmaker, like he's got third eye tape to tape. I mean, look at his stats, 92 passing, puck skills are five stars. Uh, shooting there is four and a half. It's got a really good shot. It's powerful, pretty accurate. 92 offensive awareness. I think him playing Stuchla and Kachuk could really help them score more. Brown's 84, so he's only two overall higher, but you can see he's got much better offensive stats. Adding Gravel there. Um, fringe starter, he's unsigned. And then Tillett here, low top six, unsigned. Hopefully that kind of pushes it over the edge. Blue Jackets reject. Fair enough. I think we could just add some picks. We've got a ton. I think three fourths, three fifths. Let's add, like, bet on ourselves, add our fourth, our fifth to get this through. And there we go. Okay, so hopefully Voracek can be a difference maker for us on that first line. Honestly, after that, I don't even really know. I, I can just kind of look around and see if there's, like, a nice value trade to make. Otherwise, probably good with that. Also, guys, looking at our team, I just noticed Timu Allen here now has low lead potential. And he's 79 overall. Uh, he was not 79 to start of the year. Nor did he have a little lead. I want to say he was like 76, low top 4, something like that. So uh, to see him grow in rating and potential is really cool. Next year, guys, trying to get Pickering from Tampa Bay. Um, 72, medium top 4D, offering up Niederback. Rizika accepted trade deadline complete. I was going to gonna explain that trade I saw I was finishing. So that worked out really well. Uh, Niederback, Rizika are both 79s. Rizika's 24, Niederback's 22. I think Rizika's medium top 6, Niederback's high top 9. They look like they'll probably end up being low 80s at best. Pickering was 20, 72, medium top four. Former first round pick, 2022 by the Lightning. We needed more defensive prospects than forward. I think that was pretty obvious when you look at our AHL team. So, uh, yeah, made that. I didn't realize how little time we had left. I think that's like, <laughs> you can't make a trade later than that. Um, let's see here. Walker goes to the Wild. Kavanaugh to the Flyers. Dean Cook into the Wild. Cock into the Capitals. Mackenzie Blackwood to the Leafs. Amira off the Devils. Um, let's see, Justin Barron there, the Edmonton Oilers, our trade for Voracek, um, Arvidsson there, the Stars, Eric Gustafson, Daniel Sprong to the Flames, King Korshak to the Penguins, Brian Dillon to the Panthers, JVR to the Islanders, uh, Troy Stetcher and Jack Campbell to the Hurricanes, Nybeck to the Blue Jackets, the Predators there, we got Jack Roslovich after, I mean, we, we turned that Blue Jackets trade down, so, um, not a bad trade deadline, I think we had the biggest trade, we also for sure had the last one, Austin Watson on waivers, could pick him up out of the AHL team. We did just trade away a couple AHL forwards. He actually might not be too bad to put on like our AHL fourth line. So after the trade deadline, guys, here's an updated look at the team. Kachuk, Stutzla, Voracek get a plus three. I think that's gonna be a nasty first line. The rest of the lines there are the same. Uh, same with defensively. In terms of special teams, we got Voracek on the second power play unit. He's also on the second four man there. So hopefully he can kind of help out our offense. And then after trading away a couple AHL forwards, bottom six has a different look. Defense, though, is still the same as I think the defense we got back is still in junior. So I think we made two nice trades there. Hopefully both teams continue playing well and we make the playoffs. All right, guys. So sadly, this season, we finished the record of 42-34-6. Now, the bad thing is after the trade deadline, we actually didn't play great. We had a record of 7-12. and You can see a lot of losses there adding up. I was watching us. Were we going to make the playoffs? Were we not? We were hovering around a wildcard spot. 
and we missed by one point. Honestly, I cannot believe it. Uh, we could actually even go down one more spot. The Lightning win. They'll have 91 points, but looks like Maple Leafs already have that last wildcard spot secured. Capitals, though, do not. So I couldn't believe it. Literally one point there out of a playoff spot. Just needed like an extra OT loss. Brought in Voracek. I thought we were going to play even better. And like, I couldn't believe it. Like the amount we were losing there. I thought we were going to keep it up. Now, hopefully the AHL team at least, they had a really good season. 115 points, won the conference. The Griffins though, are going to win the entire AHL. Um, they're just playing insane. Check is there, 113 points. So, I mean, at least it shows we're getting better. And even though we finished, you know, one spot of the playoffs, actually that's even worse though, because with the new draft lottery rules, we came and picked first overall, but what are you going to do? So, take a look here and see how everyone did. Brady Kachuk there, 77 points on the year is not too bad. Stutzel, 76. Voracek, 66. We'll see how he did on that first line. 18 and 20. Now he's minus 4, which I don't know how that's happening, but like almost a point per game. Definitely did better than Brown. Uh, Manji Panny, 59. Norris, 57. Batson, Monahan, White, both 50 points right on. So, we had eight guys there with 50 plus points. You bought 43. It's not too, too bad. I mean, Zach at 28 with the limited ice time is actually pretty solid, but he was making a lot of money. We'll probably let him go for next year. Uh, Varlamov here, 0.899 and 3.21. He needs to be better than that, and I think we have decent defense in front of him. Uh, we got him signed there two years. Honestly, might trade him, let him go, try and find a new starter. AHL team, Cooley, 78 and 81. up to an 81. That's awesome. He'll definitely make an NHL team next year. Maybe even put him in the top six. Mulligan, this was his last year. He's 27 now. We had 71 points. Greg, 64. Foreman's in 62. Fantilli, 60. Let's see if these guys can grow. Uh, Lucius, 52. Expect a little bit more from him playing first line center. Thompson, 47. That Allen guy, 38. Let's see. Goaltending wise, Rodriguez. Really good numbers. 0.918, 2.14. What do you expect, I think, from an 81 overall playing in the AHL? We'll see whether or not he actually grows. A lot of times. The AHL stats don't really matter for the growth. Now, entire league here, McKinnon had 118 points playing for the Hurricanes. Kane there, 115. Suchikov also 115. McDavid, Debrinkit, Matthews, Dreisettle, Eichel, Teravainen, okay. So, again, guys, this is why I have some engine scoring set to high, because we only had five guys there with 100 plus points. And, you know, it was guys that, for the most part, make a lot of sense. If you have it at medium, like McDavid's putting up, sometimes not even 90 points. Just really stupid, honestly. And Kane, Lamar Richard, there are 69 goals. Nice. Defensively here, Adam Fox, 76. He's still a 91 there. Okay, so looks pretty good. Uh, rookie skaters, I don't think we had one. Shane Wright, point per game for the Kraken. 83 overall. Looks like he was probably a second line center for him. That's cool to see. He doesn't usually go off like that. Or actually, they wait a year though, because Bedard had a rookie season, 68 and 81. Looks like he was playing first line for the Kings. He's an 89 already. Right there, still an 83. Uh, Michkov had 53 points for the Montreal Canadiens. Looks like he was probably second line. Look at that shot already. Very, very good. So, a lot of good up and coming young talent here. Bergen, 47 for the Red Wings, 84. Good to see him actually growing here. So, uh, in terms of the entire NHL, I swear if we finish like 16th or something and miss the playoffs, I'll be so annoyed. Hurricanes there won the President's Trophy. And okay, so we're 18th in the NHL, but come on. Like, we were in a playoff spot all year. I mentioned we started out the year literally 11 0 2, and I guess. You know, the, at the end of the season, we had to catch up to, like, kind of our average points. Devils, 54. Not a good look there, finishing last in the NHL. Goals, 4 here. Blackhawks, 1st. We're not on the first page. Uh, nor are we on the last, so that's good. We're kind of mediocre. Goals against, we don't have the worst. Uh, nor do we have one of the best. So we're pretty mediocre in both goals, 4 and goals against. I think we really just got very, very unlucky. Uh, the good news is, AHL teams not only in the playoffs, but they have a ton of awesome young talent. Um, so I think, you know, if we... Give ourselves some cap room. We could sign maybe like one or two big free agents on short-term deals. Uh, have our you know young players come in, play awesome on rookie deals, and then when they expire, we let the superstars go that we signed, and we give them the new big deals. So this next three years, honestly, might be kind of our best window to win that cup. Now, I'll sim through the first round here against Laval, and we're up two to oh wow, we were up two nothing, went two two. We did beat them though in five. And the next round here, the Utica Comets. I'm just going to sim this one as well through the whole series. And I don't know why that second game doesn't load in. But we beat them there actually in five. And now we have the Charlotte Checkers here, conference final. I'll just sim this as well, series, whole series. But if we do make the... Okay, I was going to say if we make the Calder Cup final, I'll do a game by game. Unfortunately, they beat us there in five. We only won the fourth game, five to four. And there's going to be a new Calder Cup winner. You can see Chicago versus Charlotte there. So not the Griffins going back to back to back to the 3 -peat. 
In the NHL, it's actually the Rangers and the Stars. And the playoffs are now complete, guys. Stanley Cup champions are the Dallas Stars. Color Cup champions are the Charlotte Checkers. So good to see the AHL team at least lost the eventual Color Cup champion. Draft lottery here. We are picking 14. So yeah, the highest we could have jumped was four, but that would have been pretty cool if we did that. And there's actually no change. New Jersey keeps the first pick. Montreal keeps the second. Hopefully there's some crazy player available at 14, but I'm kind of doubting it. Take a look as well at the playoff tree. See who Dallas went through there in the West. So they beat the Jets in seven, Blackhawks in six, Sharks in seven, before taking out the Rangers there in six. The Red Wings again in the Eastern Conference Final, losing seven to the Rangers. I swear they lost to the Maple Leafs in like the first or second year. Awards here next. So the team awards, we know all of those. Individual McKinnon, Art Ross, and the Hart. Fox there, James Norris, Kane, Lady Bing, Shane Wright, of course, Calder, Malkin, Con Smythe on the Stars. Wow. I don't think he was a free agent, was he? Because I don't remember seeing him. Either he got traded to the Stars or he joined them. There's actually a big rumor he was going to join the Stars back when Gontrar was on that team. Markstrom Vesna and the William Jennings Trophy. Alexiak Bill Masterton. Sharks coach Jack Adams. Couturier, Selkie, McKinnon, Ted Lindsay. Then Kane there, of course, with the Maurice Richard. Take a look at the AHL awards next here. I think we won the regular season Eastern Conference. Okay, so that's nice to see. Of course, that means we also won our division. Individual awards here. Nolan Foote, most points. Uh, Cole Lynn there, MVP. Corey Perry, most goals in the AHL. Hano there got best rookie for the Kraken AHL team. Chalowski, best D-man for them as well. Drieger, best goalie. Wow, I can't believe they have him in the AHL already. Gibson, MVP of the playoffs. Hagelin there, sportsmanship, also in the AHL. Getting community involvement. Rodriguez, though, lowest goals against. I'm surprised he didn't win best goalie when he, you know, he had the lowest goals against, but whatever. So uh, we'll get to the draft now again. Hopefully somebody awesome at that 14th pick again. I think our window to win is like the next three to four years, so... Uh, steal at 14 would really help us. Joe Thornton finally calls it quits at 44 years old. That's pretty crazy, honestly. Former first overall. Patty Marlowe there also retires with him at 44. The first and second overall picks in 97. Like, that's just nuts. Perry there. Brent Burns retiring with the Florida Panthers. He was still in 85, and he still had one more year on his contract. Zach Parise, Dano Char as well, 96 draft. So a few legends there. Thornton, Marlowe, Char. Definitely, you know, destined for the Hockey Hall of Fame. Duncan Keith there retires at 40 with the Preds. Erickson, Ocposo, Shea Weber, Ladd, Bozak, Soderbergh, Green, okay. Some pretty big names retiring this year. Goaltending-wise, Craig Anderson, Dubnik, Bishop. So uh, nothing too crazy in terms of goaltending. And we have Joe Thornton and Brent Burns both becoming coaches. So if we need a new one, I'll definitely look to hire one of them. And so we're now at the draft here, guys. Curious to see what the top of this draft class is looking like. Wow, okay. So unknown first overall because he's Polish, but he's playing in Sweden. So we really should know about him. Um, we'll see, I guess, what happens. High top six second, above medium elite there at three. We've also got a medium elite at five. A lot of unknowns, actually, in the top of this draft. Medium top nine. It's probably got to be at least medium top six. Um, so central scouting 14. Could be medium elite. Medium top four, Antonio. I mean, like I said, we kind of got to get lucky. I'm not really liking what I'm seeing here. I don't think our scouts did as good a job as they normally do. Um, guaranteed medium elite goalie, though, German 40. That's an early second rounder. We definitely have to make sure we get him. Uh, we have a second, we have a third. I think we can make that happen. This gem here should be medium elite. He's a 58. Actually, I should check the gems. So the fifth overall doesn't matter. This guy, 36, is a gem? Maybe he's medium elite or he's like high rated medium top six. NHL ETA, three years. I'm thinking he's probably medium elite. Maybe we'll take him with 14 if we, count, if we trust the gem. So I just sent to our pick here, guys. You got a lot of medium top sixes. Nashville gets an 80 overall medium elite defenseman at 10. Jeez, I wish I traded up four spots to get him, but of course we didn't see him. Yoshi there, 79 medium elite. Culp, 82. Layunin, 83. Pekka Ryan there, 65 high top six. What a butcher of a pick by the Canadians. 83 medium elite right after, 82 with the pick after that. And the first overall guy was 84 medium elite. Jeez, I mean, our scouts had the high top six as a second overall pick as well. I don't know why. So I'm thinking here, we probably take the best player available. I mean, there's this guaranteed medium top four defenseman, Antonio. Nick Letty, NHL ETA three years, was also this Stefan Waite guy. He looked almost like Shane right there. Three years, Voracek. But we could trade back, get that gem, and then maybe get an early second as well. Because we do like that goalie who's a medium elite. All right, guys, so now I'm trying to trade our 14th overall for two early seconds from the Coyotes. Somehow their picks have more value, even though in real life you'd normally have to give up like 24 plus a second for 14th. And we're only asking for two seconds, maybe because they're both early. I'm just going to try this first, see what they say. 
Trades accepted, okay. So the value was actually on their side, but maybe because they wanted our pick, both picks were on the block. So I'm going to sim to pick 34 here. Um, hopefully our gems available is Korolev. Please be medium elite. Please be medium elite. 60 overall, medium top 6. Okay, so I mean we probably would have gotten a similar player at our other pick. I'm uh, going to send a pick 37 now. I'm not going to give up the pick we just traded so much for. And we're going to take the goalie here, guaranteed medium elite. German. Hopefully he's decent rated for a second rounder. He is. 60 medium elite goalie. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that name. Sh sure, sure. But um, I feel like that actually wasn't too bad trading back because we didn't have a second rounder. So that definitely helped us out. And right now, guys, we're trying to trade Voracek to the Blues for a second and fourth round pick. So I didn't do my due diligence when I traded for him. I thought he was expiring, but they actually extended him at 9.7, which is way too much for an 85. The Blues like him, though. I'm hoping this trade goes through. It does. Wow. So that cap would have really hurt us. We get another second round pick this year, plus a fourth rounder. So we really have a lot of draft capital to work with. There's this Finnish defenseman who's a gem, 58. I think I'm going to play it safe, take him now. And he's a 64 medium top four. For the second round, that's really good. As well, getting up from Vorchek's contract is even better. And the Blues are trying to make another trade with us. They want our third rounder, 88th overall, for a fourth and a sixth. Um, I feel like we have enough depth picks already. I'd rather just kind of take the next guy available. Look at this, guys. There's a new Cole Castles. Literally a player that exists. Uh, NHL ETA, five years. He's got low top six. Naslin here, low elite. Hopefully we're picking by 111 to get Naslin. 59, low top nine. Oh, I thought it was accurate. I guess it wasn't. Um, so we'll take that Naslin guy here. We actually have back-to-back -back picks. So like I was saying, first we're going to take Naslin, low elite. 59 are not too bad. Sasuke there might be low top four. Same with Brain. Petrovsky might be low top six. Nestrov might be low elite. I guess low elite's the best thing there. So we'll take the center. Uh, 62 low top nine. Could have been better, but not terrible. And we have another pick here at 47. The Blue Jacket just got a low elite guy. So Saki's next up. We'll take a chance on him. Please be decent. 58 low top six. And now in the fifth round here, Petrovsky could be low top six from Owen Sound. Low top nine. We got another pick here in the fifth round. So I'll take Rajala and then Schubert there. We can honestly take with like a seven. So I'm thinking I'm going to trade the rest of our picks for next year. Uh, 51, me and bottom six. Yeah, that wasn't great. I'm going back to Arizona here, guys. Offering them two six and a seventh this year for next year's fourth. Trade rejected. Again, there's really no one else we want um, aside from one guy. So I'm just going to kind of keep going down here till they say yes. A fifth should do it. Okay, I was going to say, they're getting a good amount of draft capital there. So Arizona Coyotes are our team to trade with. Um, our last guy should definitely be there at 206 because I think his rank was like 288. And yeah, Schubert there. Could be low elite. Low top six for like the seventh round. Not too bad. He is only 48 overall though. Um, overall, I think that was a pretty solid draft. I'm definitely glad Cod Warcheck is about to get a pay raise. So uh, another 10 picks there. Like we have so many prospects um, on our team in the system. You got to hope, you know, a couple of them randomly grow more than you expect. All right, guys, we're at the resign phase here. 18 half million in cap space. I'm going to look at forwards first here. So Pavel Zak is up to an 84. UFA wants 2.5. He wants a... He grew in rating and he wants a pay cut. 84 for 2.5 is actually really reasonable. Um, and right now he's our sixth best forward. So right there's our top nine with DeBrusque, but definitely Cooley will be in it. I think DeBrusque, I'm just going to let go. Uh, 2.6 and 82, yeah, we don't need him. Alex Formanton there has been in the AHL, wants 1.75. I'm just going to qualify for now. Cooley, Pinto, I'm honestly probably going to trade. Still in 80, he's making 3.2. Malgan's 27, we got to let him go, let uh, younger players play in the AHL. Ratcliffe down to a 79. I mean, his role is fourth line forward, so I'm really not sure, honestly, why he did drop. Uh, Watson was just kind of a extra for the AHL for us. Kelly, 25, 74. Unfortunately, he's a bust, so we'll let him go. Marco Casper, one of our first-round picks in the first year. We definitely have to sign. And now looking at our defense here, you can see our top six is all under contract. Jake Sanderson's actually an 87 now, and he's going to get paid next year. Can we already offer him an extension? Not yet, so we'll probably do that beginning of the next episode. Uh, Johansson dropped to a 79, but this Allen guy could be an 80. Same with Lassie Thompson, even. He's a 78. 75k. I'm down to, like, get him locked up till he's done growing. Um, hopefully. You know, he does grow, obviously. And looking at our goalies here, guys. Varlamov's now down to an 83. So definitely want to try and trade him, get rid of that contract. But I'll just take the best offer I can get. Sawgard here. So he would be our AHL backup. But then Alexei here, 2066, medium elite. Uh, I guess other goalies still his role, so he should continue to grow even as like a third string or whatever. Um, so we'll get him signed. Sawgar, as long as he doesn't want, a, yeah, he doesn't want a lot of money. I'll uh, we'll do like three years, 150k. I think he's gonna turn to an 82. So 
Uh, we actually have some like good up and coming young goalies, but for right now we actually still need a starter. So maybe I can get like a veteran on a short term deal. And there we go, guys. Pavel Zaka came back. Really surprised he took 2.5. I thought for sure he'd leave because he'd want you know four plus. Um, I think after that it's just AHL players. So we're gonna have a lot of money here to spend in free agency again. We gotta spend it smart. We got 16.8 million. I'm thinking a solid veteran starting goalie, and then the best kind of forward we can sign to replace Warcheck on the first line. Ideally, probably short term, just because we are gonna have a lot of young players that want to get paid. And so we're at free agency here, guys. Hopefully, some good players available can help us out. Let's see Austin Matthews up to a 96 overall. If McDavid hasn't grown, he's the same rating as McDavid. UFA at 26. Geez, 53 goals, 40 assists, 93 points. What does he want? Uh, he wants 14 million. So he could sign him, but I feel like all the Sens fans would absolutely hate me, especially after he put up, you know, four goals in his first ever game on them. Mark Scheifele, 91-31. That could be like the crazy veteran we get. What's he want for term? Four years? If we did like three years till Cooley and Fantilli need new contracts, how on the first line? That could be nuts. Tara Vinen even. He wants 200k less. He's two overall lower. Wenberg surprisingly got all the way up to an 87 on the Kraken. Kapanen, Jordan Everly up to an 87. F. Kenny Malkin, that's another option too. He's 37, could come in, definitely help us out. Could be Honestly, he could center our first line, put Stutzel on the wing. Patch ready. Bolvier up to an 87. Reinhardt, Devin Taves. I feel like our defense is set, but if not, give me a nice sign. Surprise, he dropped in rating. I made him an 87. I don't know how he went down to 86, playing on like a stacked Avalanche team. Tyler Johnson is actually up in rating. Okay, so there's a lot of options here for us for sure. I'll take a look here at goalies. Carter Hart. 2588 medium elite. He's an RFA. Dang, if he wasn't. Ilya Sorokin, do we try another Islanders goalie? 2087. His stats last year weren't that great. He is a lot younger though than Varlamov. Uh, let me sort here by overall. Freddie Anderson. Oh my gosh, 34 years old. 85 overall, which is pretty good. He only wants 2.4. Rolls a starter. He's got a zone ability, a few X factors. Stats last year weren't great. Was he on the Hurricanes? He was on Minnesota. Okay, so Minnesota I don't think was as good a team as the Hurricanes. The year before he had really good numbers. I think Anderson here is the guy to sign. Flurry as well, but Flurry's 39, so Flurry's about to drop off a cliff in terms of rating, I think. I'm down to get Anderson, save a lot of money on Sorokin, and then hopefully in two years' time, either Rodrigue or Sawgard, Gossesin, one of our medium elites maybe, like it's time for them to be the NHL starter. Sorokin, we could do. We kind of started with Varlamov last year. He could just drop in ratings. So I'm down to go Anderson here. Really cheap deal, two years. I'll do, honestly, this is already such a good deal. I'll do 2.75 for two. Also, guys, I can check two A goalies here. Um, Nico Dawes, 23.79. Medium starters, actually solid, but pretty much the same goalie as Sagar. This doesn't really make a ton of sense. Uh, same with Heffer there, 23.80. Why these guys are UFAs, I have no idea. And checking two-way skaters here, Fajimo, 24.79, medium top six. I think he got to like an 83 in our Penguins franchise, so I'll try and get him locked up there for three years. Hallander, 24.74, he's probably done, so we'll just do two years, see if he can kind of grow a bit. Uh, Raphael Lavois, an RFA. Anyone else? Tyler Madden, 24.79, he's got pretty decent offensive stats. Wouldn't mind signing him just to help out the AHL team. Also got Alexiev here, 2478. He could help out the AHL D. We're trying to get our first color cup still, so I uh, wouldn't mind bringing in some decent rated guys who could become, you know, low 80s, in which point they're depth NHL players. I'm not sure if this is going to work, guys, but I'm offering Varlamov to the Blackhawks for a second. If they say yes, the steal, they say yes. Especially if we get Anderson for 2 million less, who's higher rated. Uh, I don't really care though. Blackhawks, you gotta be smarter. And next year, guys, I'm trying to make a blockbuster trade for Drew Doughty. I had no intentions of making this trade. Originally, I was just gonna try and trade Pinto to the Kings for like a second rounder. I figured I'd do good by him, send him to LA. You know, it's a cool place to live. But then I noticed Doughty was on the block. He's an 88, tons of X factors, still a very solid defenseman at 34, making a lot of money, 11.6 million, but only three years left. And again, I think like the next three years is our window. After that, we're going to have a lot of money to pay for the younger players, so why not bring in an elite defenseman? Standing there is also going over, kind of taking over his spot, plus, of course, we need some cap. And I mean, honestly, we're only adding, what, $5 million here to get Doughty. Third round pick in Rackham as well to try and smooth this trade over. We'll see what the Kings say here. I think they just want out of his contract. Trade's rejected. Okay, fair enough. We did just get a second from the Blackhawks, so we could up that third to a second. I'm going to bet on ourselves and trade ours rather than Chicago's. 
Trade still rejected. Now LA is interested in both of our medium league goalies. I feel like Alexi is probably better. Six overall higher, only one year older. Um, let's do it. So we'll add this guy there. We just drafted Shower with Ratcliffe, Sandin, Pinto. I don't even have the second on, but they say no. I'll add the second back. Trade's rejected. I'm not sure what they're talking about with like multiple needs. Pinto's like the only NHL ready guy. So we'll do the second. Maybe they just don't want Ratcliffe. Try this. Trades accepted, okay, so maybe they just didn't want Radcliffe. Second, medium league goalie, Sandin, Pinto. It's a lot to give up for Doughty, but again, I think that could really boost our team. Now, free agency-wise, still a lot of money left. We have 15 million cap space. I said there's no way we can go after Matthews. I don't go after Shifley, though. Imagine bringing him, him and Doughty. Uh, four years, that's what he wants. That works out for me. 13 million. For 91, that's a lot of money, but we got to outbid teams. We are Ottawa. Let's try it. So we'll be left with about 2.4. Um, we're good defensively for sure. I'm thinking honestly, if anything, we could use like a fourth line forward, but those guys usually we can kind of get really good deals on a month from now. So we'll probably wait. Now having said that guys, look at this. Max Domi, 83 overall, only wants 1.5. Henrique, 83 wants 1.8, bit older though. So I'm gonna make Domi an offer here. I'll do, uh, yeah, 1.5 for two. He probably doesn't say yes, but if he does, that'd be insane. Adam Lowry there. Making 3 million. I mean, we just made an offer on Domi, so don't really need him. Shifley, of course, we're hoping on. Uh, Rodriguez, I'm not going to give up for that little of a price. I think he could actually turn out to be a starter based on his growth so far. Uh, we just got a new associate coach. Ours we couldn't afford during the resign phase. Max Domi, 1.5 million for 83 is a great contract. Alexiev helps with the AHL. Fajimo, Madden, Hollander. So waiting to hear back from Shifley. Are you kidding me? Mark Shifley. I appreciate your interest. Decided to go with another team at this time. You simply have not offered me the dollars I feel I'm deserved. I mean, I actually gave him extra money. Anderson, though, does slide with us. I almost forgot we made him that offer. 2.75. We paid him like an extra 250. He's still got an absolute steal. Same with Domi. Uh, we have $13 million now. I guess our guy's Malkin. Um, him between Stutzla and Kachuk could maybe be a nasty first line. I did say I wanted a veteran. Very uh, short term deal there. Brought in a lot of money with Doughty for you know, year two, year three. Patra is a sniper. I feel like it could help us out too, but Malkin, probably the biggest difference maker, 27-47. Pacioretty, 40-40. and 40. Oh, Okay, he had 80 points. Maybe if we put him on the first line, wish Stutzler was a playmaker. I could chuck who's a power forward, he could just go off. All right, we'll try a two-year deal here on Pacioretty. We just want him to score goals for us. We'll try two years, eight million. And Pacioretty says yes. Okay, so no Mark Shifley, but um, I still think that's a pretty good player to get. And we have 5.8 million in cap space. Could use a fourth line forward. Um, there's actually some really good deals. Like Adrian Campe, 2.5 for 84. Blake Wheeler, 2.3 for 83. We didn't get Shifley. We could add Blake Wheeler. I mean, worst case, he's just like a great fourth line forward for us. I'll offer him, I mean, 2.2 for one year. I think it's pretty low risk for a guy like that. Phil Kessel even I'd love to add to the team, but... Probably doesn't make a lot of sense. Honestly, we need more like really solid defensive players, I think, for the fourth line. Now, having said that, guys, Eli Tolvanen, 2582. He's a UFA there, the medium top six. I feel like we have to give him a chance. He's still got time to grow. He's only asking for $2 million. We'll see if we can get him for two years at 2.3. Should have enough money for this. Um, also, too, like I was saying, I want to get more defensive players for the fourth line. So, starting by D, Bergeron, Kopitar, Perron, Eberle, even Bailey, can't afford. Mikhail Backlund, though, 1.1, Achari, 800k. Um, can definitely get these guys. Backlund, I'd rather one year. We'll try if he offered him what he wants, see what he says. Achari, 825k. Um, even if he's in the AHL, it's still, you know, worth the risk. And because I think we might be at the max contracts by the time we sign those guys, offering a few players that we don't need for a fourth of the Capitals. Trade accepted. There was one guy that was kind of decent, like 22, 67, medium top nine, but, like, those guys are probably never going to turn into anything. Um, fourth and a six for Rodriguez. Castle in a fourth. I've had a lot of offers like that where like teams think Rodriguez has negative value, which makes no sense. He's a good young goalie. Um, Mikel Backlund goes to the Canadians. Okay, I feel a little offended, but that's fine. Blake Wheeler joins our team though. Same with Achari and Tolvanen. So that might be the fourth line right there that we just signed. So that actually worked out really well. Um, I think we're done for free agency. Just have to send the next season. Still have 3.2 million in cap space because we didn't get Shifley, but that's okay. Uh, maybe we'll get like a big fish next summer. Are you kidding me guys? And look at this. After signing him, Montreal offers us back in the sixth, Rodriguez in the third. 
the game gets all mad at you when you trade a guy after signing him, but they'll do the exact same thing. And this is insane, guys. We're in September now. Victor Arvidsson still doesn't have a contract. 84 wants 1.6. He's actually, like, a really good player. Um, if no one else is going to give him an offer, I will. I don't know what other teams are thinking. Like, that guy could easily be a second-line winger and do well. And look at that. The next day he said yes. We're coming to the AHL. I'm definitely going to make sure he's in the NHL, though. And next year, guys, I'm trying to get trade the Chicago Blackhawks offering up Sean Monaghan for Connor Murphy in a third-round pick. So basically, we have way too many NHL forwards, and I think Monahan's kind of the guy to go. 84 overall, his D awareness isn't as high as I thought it was. He's a pretty good two-way guy, but we have players like him and Colin White. Four million for the next four years. I'm just going to show you guys what I'm talking about. I'll sort forwards here by rating. I mean, just look at all these guys. Like, I was looking at it, we're, we're going to have Tolvan in, in the AHL. That's how many good forwards we have. Now having said that, we're actually going to have a 70 as our sixth AHL D-man. So we need some defensive help. Connor Murphy here is one of the better defensive defensemen in the NHL. 90D awareness, shot block, stick check. That's kind of like the perfect bottom pairing guy. Help the PK. Now Monahan has more value, so I'm asking for a third with him. We'll see what they say here. Trade's accepted. Okay, so I think that's a great trade. I'll tinker with the lines now. We should be looking good. So just finished the lines, and these three guys here are all going to be scratch for us in the AHL. Sokolov, 24-77. Basically, almost done growing. Same with Alexiev, Hollander. I kind of figure they're going to be bust. So trying to get a third from them still while they have, you know, some years left to grow. But I don't think any of them will even become 80s. Arizona says yes. Nice. Alexia was well. I wanted to start, but his chemistry just did not fit. Like, he was getting double X's. So I'm glad I can get a third rounder for him. I'm going to show you guys the lines next year. Honestly, we better be making the playoffs. So NHL team. Brady Kachuk, Stutzla, Patrick, you get a plus two on the first line. Batherson, Logan Cooley, Mangiapane get a plus five on the second. So Cooley's gonna be playing like an 88 his rookie season. Now I see his hands could be better, but I'm hoping for some big things from him. 91D awareness, another reason why we really need Monahan. He's a very good two-way forward. We got Max Domi, Josh Norris, Blake Wheeler on the third line getting a plus two. Then we have Colin White, Pavel Zaka, Victor Arvidsson, 384s on our fourth line. This is ridiculous. Um, <laughs> that's gotta be the best fourth line in hockey. Now, I could put White third line and Arvidsson third line, but then we get no boost, so I figured this made a lot more sense, because with the plus two, uh, Domi and Wheeler actually, you know, just as good if not better than the 84s. Defensively here, this looks way better. Shabbat, Doughty, top pair with a plus three, so they're playing like 94, 91 respectively. Branch from Sanderson get a plus one. Bernard Docker, Murphy get a plus one, and again, Murphy gonna be great for us on the PK. Goalie-wise, Anderson starting, Gustin backing him up. Very excited to see how this team will do. We also still have like over $4 million in gap space, which is nuts. Um, AHL team, Tolvan and Fantilli, Formantin. Are you kidding me? They better just tear up the AHL. Uh, even Greg, Lucius, Fajmo there is really solid as well. Um, Olison, Casper, Madden, Tuminen, Achari, Ratcliffe. Like our fourth line in the AHL, not including Tuminen. Like say put Madden there, that could be an AHL fourth line easily. Defensively here, uh, Brophy, the medium league guy, getting a plus three with Allen. Kind of like um, Alexi of an AHL. Allen did not fit the NHL chemistry at all, so... I'll leave him in the AHL for now. Hopefully he can grow, and then maybe we can find a way to fit him in. If not, just trade him for picks. Uh, Lassie Thompson playing through Hanson on the second pair. Pickering and Terry on the bottom. Pickering, of course, the guy we got for pretty cheap. 2076, medium top four, no longer in junior. Rodriguez there, still 81. Slugger still 77, backing him up. So I think both teams look awesome. The AHL team obviously has been playing pretty well, but they really should be color cup contenders this season. An NHL team, not only should they make the playoffs, I mean, looking at our roster, I don't know how they're not competing for the Stanley Cup. So uh, we'll see what our ratings are here, guys, heading to the fourth season. Castles and Lutz there for third, fourth. Definitely not. I think uh, they're worth more than that. So like I was saying, we'll take a look at the ratings here. We've got 95 offense, 95 defense, and 86 goaltending. So hopefully that's enough to finally make the playoffs. And like I said, maybe even go on a cup run. But that's going to do it for this episode, guys. If you enjoyed it, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. Thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.